What's up, you guys? What's up? Welcome back to another video with your boy Abe Shaw. Um, as you can see by the title of this video, this is gonna be like what? I think I'm gonna title it Day One and Two, Cause since I didn't give you out the first update of the first trades we took in a, uh, on a funded account. So, first setup. Actually, you know what? I'm not even gonna talk to you over here. We actually gonna hop on FTMO. I'm gonna actually share my screen. We could do it that way. But um, let's get it. I'm just on flex to fund it. All right, you guys, let's look at it from the FTMO standpoint. So as you can see, um, $10,000 account, the goal is to make $1,000 on the account, can't lose no more than $500 a day. So at the first two trades that we took, well, for day one, as you can see, we had we were in drawdown, we lost 194. Really, it was really, in my opinion, it was an unnecessary loss. So I'm going to show you uh, this Germany 40 trade. I just had to stop loss too tight on this, but this trade actually had one in profit and went to go smash the TP that I was looking to TP at. I just had my stop loss tight because obviously I was like, you know what? Let me just make the wrist super tight. And then the TP goal that I wanted was, um, I forgot what the area was. I would have made, I think, I think I want to make like 300 off of it. Wait, wait let me, actually I can see, hold on, what was my loss size? And then I could tell you, yeah, I would have made like, I think I was going for a 7,500 percent on the two dollar lot. That would have been uh, I don't remember. I'm not even gonna like make up a fake number because I actually genuinely don't remember what that uh, what that number was. That quick, I forgot. And then this entry actually came from the bot. The bot got me in too early, and we only entered this one because of like, consolidation. The market was moving too slow. This was like for my people that know. Um, on Monday. The indices wasn't really moving for for during like Tokyo going into London session. It was moving a little bit slow, so we were able. So that was another reason why we got whipped. Stop loss got hit easily on this one. I think this was another trade that ended up dropping later on that night, but that was after it pulled back like 100, 200 pips. So that was ridiculous, right? And then last night on SPS 500, I should have let this one um, swing for my 500 dollars move that I wanted. But basically, what I'm doing is I'm risking 200 pips to catch, excuse me, or let me start using proper terms. I've been risking 20 pips to catch, um, 20, not 20 pips, 20 points to catch. No, I'm tripping. I'm risking 100 points to catch 200 points or 20 points. It's crazy, like, I'm starting about to make sure I start using, like, points versus pips, because usually I always say, like, oh, I'm catching this many pips, da 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 because my, my opinion is, like, pips and points, same difference. It really doesn't matter. They all still move the same, right? It's just with indices or the index, people like to call them points instead of pips. But I'm risking, for my people to understand pips, I was risking 100 pips to catch 200 pips. So, okay, I'm risking $200 to catch um $400 on each setup. Anywhere really between 400 to 500 now, especially now that we're getting towards New Year's session. So, as you can see last night during London session, I was able to swing. Actually, I could show y'all. Let's hop on the charts. Um, I might actually. I'm debating on if I want to hold this. This is set up I'm in right now. But, uh, hold on. Last night, right? It's funny because if you look at my chart, you're like, why you got a buy area right here in your TPs? But this is like old TPs. So last night, as you guys know, the market, well, not even last night, we could just go from when the market was in sales. So yesterday during the New York session, it was moving stupidly slow for no reason. Um, Not really moving like as volatile as you usually do, just kind of like marinating and chilling around a certain price area point. And then out of nowhere, we had that. Bullish momentum. So on the 15 minute, I was telling my chat this. 15 minute, you can start seeing when the bullish momentum came, when you start seeing like the bullish engulfing candlesticks, roughly around this candlestick and this candlestick. This was your indication that the market was going for the reversal. I was at the movies at the time, so I wasn't paying attention. But once you started pushing back up, I'm like, okay, bet. Like, and I know, like, when it comes to the indices, if it's chilling in one session, just know the next session or two is going to go crazy. So once we understanding that, I'm like, okay, what we're going to do. We're going to look for a buy around, I think I had an entry maybe around, I know, I'm pretty sure I had one at, oh, no, I'm thinking about my live account. So the live account, I had 39, I had an entry at 3980, and then the main entry that I put in the chat was at 3985. So from 3985, my original plan was to swing it all the way back to the top, 
to just smash all my TPs for five hundred and sixty six dollars. That was the setup that I was looking, and then I think roughly around like two a.m. it started like chilling, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just uh, take profit. And I'm gonna go to sleep. I'm gonna chill. So here we are currently in the market where uh <laughs> my stock, my trailing stop losses, been probably about to get wet. We're waiting to see what the uh, penny home sale news do, right? So from there. Um, I entered like literally roughly right, right around here off the breakout. Trying to stop loss is probably like somewhere in here if it hasn't already hit already. Um, I'm waiting to see what the market do. Obviously, this is a beautiful uh breakout and retest type of setup. Like I love what I see in here. So if it respects this zone, I already told my chat like we about to swing this literally, swing it all the way to like 40, 40 type of swing. That's the setup I'm looking for. Especially like with the news is coming out, it's setting up for that, right? And then, as we look at the charts right now, it's giving us a clean setup. So when we go back to the metrics, uh, that was IQ right there to get out of this one. But when we go back to the metrics, as you can see, I'm in profit right now. Um, if I'm risking, well, I was trying to risk nothing. Now we in profit, so I'm trying to swing this. Right, swing this next move again for another five hundred dollars. With that being said, if I'm at five hundred, that means the account will be halfway completed, right? So I'll be probably ending this with five fifty six, and then obviously we still have what today is Wednesday. We still have Thursday and Friday to go crazy on the charts. So that's the setup that I'm looking for, and that's what we're looking at for day two of trading on the SMO account. And then after this one, I might let the uh, I might finish it. It might be done by tomorrow. So by day three, phase one of the challenge should be a complete. Um, yeah, because I think I might let the Germany 40 buy rock for a few and get me in there. But all right, y'all. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, depending on when I I probably want to get this set up because I'm already I'm catching up on all the videos I'm doing right now anyway. So y'all probably about to get day three and day four of the Amazon flex deliveries and then it's going to start transitioning to the funded account section. So by the time you're watching this, uh, the funded account probably might already be done. And we're back in blue. Sheesh. But all right, y'all. Peace out. Uh, if you're new, make sure you like and subscribe. What's up, y'all? What's up? So this is just the updated, um, I'm about to say the updated version, but this is just the update from earlier today's New Year's session. is currently 301. I got the blur screen on right. I say I really can't see. Oh, wait, I could just show y'all when I share my screen. It's currently 301. So I was like, let me actually come back and chop it up in this video and talk to y'all. Uh, share the screen so y'all can see basically like how did it play out today. So as you can see, um, last time we talked about it, we were, I'm gonna replay it back too. And I should have did it on the 15. I remember better. But last time we talked about it, we were about Somewhere in this area, I believe. All right, so we had our breakout. Actually, no, we was past this because by this point we was already in profit. So yeah, we was already in the video. I was showing you. Uh, we I was in blue. It was just retesting the zone. It wasn't breaking. Then, um, obviously, as you can see, the market gave us a full retest. And honestly, a part of me wasn't. A part of me was expecting the retest, but a part of me wasn't expecting the retest. The reason why I wasn't was because when the news came out positive, the market just took off. But I'm about to give you a bar. One thing I noticed about SPX, and I literally teach this in my academy, so I don't know why I thought it was going to be different in this case. But one thing I noticed about SPX, whenever the news come out positive, there's always a pullback back to the nearest support level before it goes in the direction that it wants to go in. That's the bar I'm giving y'all, right? Uh, So... What I'm looking for, or what I was looking for, as you guys know, we were looking for the buy, and then we had our TPs <clears throat> for like TP one, like literally from from this entry all the way to about up here. This is what I was looking to swing it for for five hundred dollars, five sixty six to be exact. <clears throat> but SPS wasn't moving like how SPS moved. It wasn't even though we were seeing it in fast time right now, and you see how it's kind of like playing and marinating. That's what we're seeing. That's that's what it's been this whole time. Just minimize these. Just been literally just a chill break, retest, 
pullback retest, pullback retest. Like SPS usually gives us a, a, a one retest and then it's a great uptrend move. So like I can look to the left and show you. We can get one drop and then what happens? The rest is an overall uptrend, right? Now here, this is rare too when we did that. But usually for the most part, when you get that break, boom. And then you get the full retest. Or when we come back to the scenario, okay, it's only going to retest that same price twice before it actually drops. Like that's a, it's a pattern. It's a lucky, as one of the minimum patterns that you can peep for trading SPS 500. Now, since it decided that it wanted to move slow to them, and since I'm like, you know what? This isn't even on my big boy account. This is just for the funding account challenge. I'm like, you know what? We're not going to trade today. I'm like, it ain't no point of um entering it again. I'm like, I told myself, I'm like, hey, if it hit my trail limb, it hit it. I'm not. Um, it's not worth the risk of putting my stop loss back to where my initial stop loss is usually at. Had I did that, uh, actually, hold on, let me actually go to that. Let's go to where was it? it was this entry? No, it wasn't. This was the entry I actually did get back in, but then see, this is the entry I got back in for like 20 minutes, and I was like, oh, you still consolidating? Okay, bet I'm not trading it, so I closed it. I should have held it, as you can see, it did take off, but I don't care. Uh, where was it? 4,008. So I entered at 4,008. So that means stop loss was uh, around 39.98. Didn't even come nowhere near a stop loss. But I was like, once I was in blue, I'm like, yeah, it ain't worth the risk. Because if it comes back inside its zone, then we should be able to start looking for sales. So over here, when it came back inside the zone, I had sent out a sell alert. Well, we already had a sell alert anyway, but I was like, let me send out a sell alert to the chat. Let them know, hey, a potential sell setup come in. If we break out of this zone, we got 4,000. As a sell entry, as you can see, it just double bottom and then it continued to take back off again for the buy. But since I noticed like how weird it was trading today and just how slow it's moving, like even right now, like actually we can look at this. So look, it's no more than like what 100 pips. So technically, if it was a scalper today, excuse me, if I wanted to be on a scalper market type of timing, then yeah, it would be a good day for a scalper. You can catch 100 pips going up, 100 pips going back down, another 100 pips going back up. And then here you see pullbacks and retests in the market, all this stuff that's happening. Uh, got got it moving out of character, you know? Got it really acting like moving slow and taking its time. So as I look for, I mean, that ultimately, before I get to what I was about to say, that ultimately led to me like, you know what? We're not taking no setups. Because if it ain't in the conditions that I usually trade in, why why rush it? What I could just wait um, for when I could set up do come. And I literally have 30 days to pass the challenge. So it's like, I'm not tripping. So currently, as you guys know, we are just up still $100, $100 in profit, $114 in profit. Still have minimum eight trading days left to actually trade to officially be done with phase one, right? So we're not rushing it. Um, And I've been noticing too, one thing I noticed, it's funny because like I can, now I can really talk my trade talk with y'all. I noticed on my previous challenges that sometimes I trade, I feel like, I don't know what it be. People, I feel like even even other challenges, people that trade traded in the past tell you this. I don't know what it is about. I notice my patterns. Like when I look back at the data, I'm like, damn, bro, you was popping like a hot, a lot of a lot of lot sizes, a lot of trades. I'm like, for what? When I don't trade with funny the kind of challenges, when I wasn't trading with challenges, I don't trade pop a, a thousand trades. You don't see no thirty trades. Maybe I break down one of my old uh, challenges I did. The one one of the ones I feel we could talk about it. Let me know if you're interested in that. That'd be a uh, that's a vulnerable video for me because obviously y'all seeing like, dang, this is why he lost, he trash. But for y'all, I feel like it'd be a great material. Maybe I put that in the academy or something. That'd be a great material to like dissect what you need to do. But yes, yeah, so I noticed like on the trades, the challenges that I was losing, I had like probably like let's say it was like oh 10 trades on one day, and it's like for what, bro? Like, why am I entering and placing trades that many times when usually I take about two to three good trades in a day and I'm done. I don't need 20 different trades. I don't need to be in and out of different setups. Like when I trade indices, I'm only entering during the US session. I'm entering during London maybe um, if it's Germany 40, you feel me? And then within those setups, the only reason why it's even two trades is really only one setup that I'm looking for. So even here on these four trades that it said I took on March 29th, if we come down here, you will see Two of those trades were still for the same setup, which was the buy. So technically, that's still one setup for me that I was looking for. And then we had, I think, the sale. What was the sale? 
the sale last night that I was just telling you earlier that should have that actually dropped. So I could have actually had TP on that one. And then once again, the buy. If I would have held this buy, shoot, I probably would have been done with the challenge. Honestly. Now that I think about it, I probably would have been done with the challenge one day. But it's cool. You live, you learn. Well, I know you live and learn, but if the market ain't ready, the market ain't ready. So we're gonna let it do what it do. Uh the next setup that I'll probably be looking for though. Obviously, if it decides that it finally does want to take off for that buy, that's great. I'm going to just start looking for sales once it come all the way to the top of this market. That is my goal, to start looking for the sales. Or even if we can get a, a, a real push for the buy, and then I can get a, a nice pullback entry, like around this area, that would be something I'll look for. Or even if, you feel me, I'm going to give you another one. My most ideal one now, because I am mad, I seen this 4,005 entry. I couldn't enter it. And I, I was hesitant because it was like, let me show y'all. Excuse me. Excuse me. I was in my own head a little bit only because like the market was moving too slow. So I was like, you never really know. <clears throat> this looks like a potential setup on the 15 minute for a heads and shoulders setup. For those that don't know, heads and shoulders is an indication in the market that the market is about to get ready to go for a reversal and go for a sale. So as I'm looking at this, I'm like, okay, this is a left shoulder. This is a head. It's back under the zone that it just broke out of. If we get caught in a price trap in this area, this entry at 4010 will end up being an ideal sale entry. It'll be an ideal sale area that I will want to look for. So me looking at the market, looking at a rejected support level, and then I see the price push up to around 4,007, 4,005. I'm like, dang, bro. This is a this is a nice buy entry that I would love to take. But then again, I'm looking at it like, dang. This could also be just a quick 50 point, 50 pips. I'm going to say 50 pips because I don't know the point count yet. I got to convert and switch it, the terminology, the proper terminology. But I noticed like, bro, it's only a 50 pip difference. So like if I enter this, it's only going to be 50 pips. It's like for what? Ain't no point. If I can catch the whole 100 to 200 pip move that I'm looking for, why would I catch that? And that's when I was like, so I'm not going to trade it. And as we see, the market in, did indeed did not get caught in a price trap. It actually broke out. It didn't go to create a right shoulder. It wasn't a head and shoulder setup. It actually broke out. And I mean, I could have entered that 4,005 and would have been up 100 pips had the market, um, had I stayed in it. Because as you can see, the market had pushed to 4,016. And then now you're seeing like how it's just been a whole bunch of playing around this price area, just breaking out. Constantly rejecting this area, breaking out again, constantly rejecting again, as you can see right here. Then the next breakout. So obviously, like I said, SPS doesn't do this. It's not a constant break, retest, break, retest, break, retest. It's usually one good break, retest during the opening bell or roughly around 10 to 11. And then from there, that's when the market actually take out. So the fact that it did is doing this right now, it's acting out. You feel me? So what I'm going to be looking for I want to see a full retest either to the bottom here or really here from there. Then I know for sure, okay, I'm entering a buy at 4,005. My next entry will either be a buy at 4015 or 4,005. Those are the two areas that you'll probably see me do an updated video on where I'm saying, hey, this is a buy setup that I'm looking at on SPX. Now, depending on how I'm feeling, I might actually turn my buy on tonight and I might have it give me into you. I mean, a Germany 40 trade. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I really don't gotta worry about SPS, but we'll see. <laughs> Excuse me again when the time comes. But on that note, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video. Enjoy the rest of my day. About to get ready to go to the gym in a few hours. I think within the next hour or two. May I play me some Call of Duty or something? Chill before I go work out. Peace out, y'all. Thanks for watching.